today, lesson 21A. As of late, we've been working a lot on solving two-step and multi-step equations. Well, starting today, we start a three-day process of solving word problems where you have to rely on your ability to solve two-step and multi-step equations. So today is actually day one of this idea of solving word problems involving multi-step equations, language objective, writing equations from word problems, and our typical, why am I learning this? All right, so let's get started. Uh, your ability to solve problems like this one. And number two. And number three. Do we all agree that these at this point are pretty easy, yes or no? Yes. All right, hopefully yes. And number four. Well, the idea here is we're going to take a word problem and we're going to set up equations that look like these today, okay? And since the solving part of these is now easy for most of us, as long as we can get that equation right, the rest should be easy, okay? All right, so here we go. Here is number one. It is written down in your notes. Mrs. Treble charges her music students $25 per hour plus a recital fee of $50. Each lesson is an hour. How many lessons did the student take if she paid a total of $175? Well, here's the deal. Um, if Mrs. Treble, or I guess actually if the student had a lesson of one hour, here's how you would figure that out. It would be 25 times the one hour and then plus the $50 recital fee which would be $75. Do we all agree with that? Yes. 25 times 1 is 25, and 25 plus 50. Um, if the student took two hours of lessons, then we would figure out how much it costs like that, 25 times 2 plus 50. But, you know, we could play this guessing game all day long, and it wouldn't take us long to find the answer to this one, but if that 175 was a much larger number, it would take a while before we could figure out what that is. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to try and figure out what the equation would look like. And there are several ways of figuring out where the variable has to go in these. And it's always in the part that's changing. So if I did one more hour here, it would be 25 times 3. Do we all recognize the fact that right here is the part that keeps changing as the number of hours increases? Yes? So that is where the variable has to go. That's where the term variable comes from. Things that change. That part right there keeps changing. And so that's where we want the variable to go. So let's highlight some important pieces of information. Go ahead and circle what I'm highlighting there. $25 per hour. That's a very important piece of information. Plus, and that $25 per hour will turn into 25x. And I already kind of talked about why. Plus, that's another important piece of information, we have a recital fee of $50. So that's where I got the 25 times 1 plus 50, 25 times 2 plus 50, 25 times 3 plus 50, and so on. And <clears throat> there's supposed to be a total of uh, $175 that we're taking into consideration together. So if we put all of that together, that gives us an equation of 250, or excuse me, 25x plus 50 equals 175. Now I'm going to show you a different way to look at this, okay? Um, and then we'll go about trying to solve it. I see three numbers. I see a 25, I see a 50, I see 175. Well, it should be obvious to you that it has to be equals 175 because we want the total to be over here. Now, the only other question would be, and we know it's plus because of the plus right there, would be where the variable has to go. In this problem, we are trying to find how many lessons. Lessons represent hours. So which part takes care of the lessons? The $25 part or the $50 part? 25. The 25. That's another key indicator that the X has to go with the 25. 
Another key indicator is the $25 per hour. We'll see that word per or each a lot on the part that the variable has to go with. All right, so at this point, the solving part is super easy. Let's subtract 50 from both sides. That gives us 25x equals 125. Now, by the way, as you can see in your notes, there is a line for equation. That's where your original equation needs to go. And then there's a line for a sentence, because when we solve word problems, we need to make sure we write our answer as a complete sentence. So let me back up for a second here. I want to make, everybody, uh, make sure that everybody's clear on this. This original equation right here, everybody look up here. That's the part that needs to go on your equation line, because that's the original equation. From there, down below that, you would go about solving it. And the solving part, which I was right in the middle of, is pretty easy. And we end up with x equals 5. When we're solving a regular problem or a regular equation, we could stop right there. But x equals 5 leads us to an answer that makes sense for this problem. The question is, how many lessons did the student take? She took five lessons. So we need to make sure that we write our answer as a complete sentence, and that's what goes on your sentence line. And so there are an infinite number of ways of writing this. I'm going to take a nice easy one. The student took five lessons. So I guess what I'm trying to say is this. When we're doing word problems, the equation needs to be very clear in your work, and you need to answer every single word problem as a complete sentence. If you answer word problems as x equals 5, you are not going to get credit because you haven't answered the question. All right. Let's take a look. At number two, in just a second, I want to make some other points here. Look for words like per or for each or for every or other words that could mean the same thing because that usually indicates where the variable has to go. The total typically always goes on the right-hand side of your equation. And usually what you're trying to find also tells you where the x needs to go because in this one we are trying to figure out how many lessons and it was $25 per hour, which means $25 per lesson. All right. Let's go to number two. All I want you to do right now is to write down the equation that you think we could use to solve number two. Okay, we need to subtract 180 from both sides. Then we need to divide both sides by 45. When we solve for x, we get x equals 16. But that means nothing. We need to answer the question, what did you get for your sentence? Daniel. Yeah, we don't need to get overly complicated here, right? We get x equals 16. The question is, how many weeks 
That's the answer that we're trying to find the solution for. How in how many weeks? So it took Sam 16 weeks. We have to make sure that our sentence satisfies the problem. What are we looking for? Make sure you have a complete sentence that answers that question. All right, let's go over to the other side. Everybody try number three, and it is at this point that we will start shoulder partnering our equations and answers. All right, equation for number three should look like this. Uh, some very important information here. This $15 each week. That's a key indicator that more than likely that's where the variable goes. If I look at what's being asked for in how many weeks, we're looking for the number of weeks, and it's $15 each week. That tells you the X needs to go with the 15. The total, of course, goes on the other side of the equation. So it would be 15X plus 24 because she already has $24, and she wants $249. There's the equation. Subtract 24 from both sides. We now have 15x equals 225. Divide both sides by 15. We get x equals 15. That does not answer the question. Somebody give me the equation, or not the equation, the sentence that they used for this one. Yes? But it will take Pamela 15 weeks for enough money to purchase. There we go. And I, my sentence is, it took her 15 weeks, because that's what it's asking for. And how many weeks will she have enough? It took her 15 weeks to have enough. All right, let's take a look at number four. Same thing, equation and answer. Make sure you answer your, uh, the, the problem as a complete sentence or with a complete sentence. All right, Kara has driven 75 miles. She averages 55 miles per hour. At this point on the fourth problem, you should realize that that 55 miles per hour is going to be very important in this problem. Uh, the X might go with the 55. Now I'm going to focus down to what it's asking for. How many more hours? We're looking for how many hours? It's 55 miles per hour. That's an indication that 55 and X will be right next to each other. So equation should look like this. 55X plus 75 equals 350. And we solve that by solving, or excuse me, subtracting 75 from both sides. We then divide both sides by 55. We get x equals 5. That does not answer the question. What would answer the question? What did you get? Um, Kara needs to drive five more hours. Okay, we have to answer the question. And it's asking for how many more hours. So Kara must drive five hours. All right, same thing with number five. Set it up, solve it, make sure you fill in the blank spots. As I'm walking around, I like the fact that many of you are circling the important parts, like what I'm highlight, highlighting up here. That's exactly what you should do, especially if you're not quite sure what is what. All right, so the total amount on the bill is supposed to be 570. It should be obvious that that is uh, on the right-hand side. Now we have $50 and this. Where does the variable go, Jaden? The variable goes here. Oh, um, I put the here. Well, which one does it go with, the 50 or the 65? Why? Um, because it says per hour. Yeah, that's the part that's changing. Every hour, the 65 increases, so that's why the variable needs to go with the 65. So 65x plus 50 equals 570. We solve that by subtracting 50 from both sides and then dividing by 65. We get x equals 8. But we need to make sure, Ella, that we answer the question. What did you put for your answer? It takes eight hours to install the bill. All right, very good. It took eight hours to install is what I put. So make sure when you're doing these word problems, you answer the question with a complete sentence. All right, we are finished.